What's up, everybody? Welcome to the round 18 player ratings video coming to you after an amazing win against the Pies where we dug deep and played with the spirit that the fans had been asking for all week and, and really all year. Um, always exciting to do such videos after a win, um, but especially after a, a win like that. I've already gone through in the review you know, why it was a special win. I'm sure we're all aware of the significance and the emotional uh, attachment to, uh, you know, the fans, the club, the Silvanis and and paying respect and, and, and the like. So uh, I won't go into that. But um, listen, if you have never seen a player ratings video, welcome and welcome to the Blue Abroad channel. Um, obviously, if you're here regularly, you know exactly how this works. But for those who don't, I start the conversation in this video. I'll give each player a, a score out of 10. Five is where you get a pass mark or above. Obviously, below that is a fail on the day. And really, it's not right. It's not wrong. It's not official. It's really just um, a conversation starter. Uh, in the comments, you'll have the job of going uh, and, and telling me if any of the, the scores need to be altered, higher or lower. I've got a spreadsheet where I'm collecting all the scores. And then at the end of the year, we will tally them up and, and crown a champion, even though it looks like Sam Walsh is really going to um, you know, shit it in because he just keeps on keeping on. So uh, yeah, don't take them too seriously. I can guarantee you these ones will be biased and emotional as well. Um, I, I like to look at um, each player individually, the context of their position in the in the side on the list, where they're at in their development, and, and score accordingly. So obviously, if you're a player with more expectations, it's it's a bit harder to get a high score. So anyway. We'll give it a crack. We'll start and we'll go from there. As the teams were named, we've got Saad, Jones, and Plowman. Saad, um, he was okay in the first. He had five in the first. He had some treatment. I th I'm not sure what happened to him, um, but I remember seeing him on the bench. There was like a leg issue or something. So he was obviously sore. It obviously impacted him throughout the game. Um, he didn't, uh, didn't, unfortunately, didn't lay a tackle in that first half, as I noted here. I didn't think he gave up. He was okay in the first, but I just thought, I was left wanting more and I expect more from him, but nonetheless, I gave him a six for his game. I thought he definitely did his job and, and you know, that back line all did their job. Jonesy, I thought his first half was really poor given he's a real leader of the club. He's in the leadership group. We're missing so many of our, we're missing both our captains and therefore I expect a guy like Liam Jones to step up. I thought his first half was just not good enough by his own standards. Um, he was outmarked by Elliot at the start of the third, and I started thinking, okay, this is becoming a really poor game. Um, but he's he was also outbodied by Cameron in that third quarter with eight minutes to go, and um, really he lifted in the fourth. And I think there were a couple that did as well, and, and that's really all that matters. It might not be your game, but it can be your quarter or your moment. Um, I did think that he took his quarter. I thought he was instrumental in that in that fourth for us, and um, I gave him a pass mark for his game. I, I expect more from him. He is better, has played better than what he did against the Pies. And um, also he did his job at the end of the day and we won the game and he was part of that that back that back group that limited the Pies to 62 points. So I gave him a pass mark, gave him a five. Plowman, I thought he was another one that just didn't get his job done for the first couple of quarters. Um, he was giving up contested marks to Jamie Elliott. Um, he gave up a, a run to Elliott. He didn't, he didn't body him out in the first um, it was outmarked by Ollie Henry in that second quarter with 12 minutes and three to go. Um, he dropped a chess mark in the third with eight minutes, 30 to go. And I'm starting to think it's just not his day. And mind you, at this point in the first three quarters, I'm, I'm writing notes and I'm also watching us just not play well. Um, so yeah, I didn't think he played very well for the first couple of quarters, but he got his job done in the fourth. And that's really what mattered. I, I felt like the, all of them lifted in the fourth. So um, I gave Plowman just a bare pass mark for his game. And he's another one that I expect more from because he's a senior player and and especially on the day where we're missing so many of our senior players, I, I would expect him to be one that has to step up. Next up, Stocker, Weeder, and Williams. Stocker, um, he wasn't bad to start. There was like an errant handball in the first quarter, which went, I think, behind Kennedy. Um, and then there was the, the kick turnover to Noble in that second quarter with 9.30 to go. But what I always look for with, with anyone who you know makes mistakes is what are you doing the very next play? The, or the next contest that you're a part of. And after Stocker makes that mistake, his very next play that he was a part of was a goal. Um, I noticed him really pushing up the ground and working hard after he had disposed of the ball to become an option. I'm not sure if that's a new role for him. I love it. I hope that we can do that more. I hope that that's going to allow him to, you know, 
get midfield minutes. Um, and, you know, how can we not talk about the bump? It just signifies everything. And there's little things like the bump because it's a shepherd. It's a selfless act. He's blocking and creating space for his teammate. And then he always just seems to do the right teammate things or the right things that you would expect like a captain to do. Like you see at the end of the game, Jack Silvani's crying, Stocker's there, arm on him. He's just right there around him. And I can't speak highly enough of him. I've already flagged him as my boy when Murphy retires. I kind of hope he gets the number three. I don't know, maybe he likes the number 13 and that's him. But if not, I think the number three would suit him. Um, that's just a personal take, but I gave him an eight for his game. I love where he's at in his development. He's still very early in his experience. Um, but I think 2021, one of the stories for us this year is, hey, Liam Stocker has got himself into the side. He's playing regular footy. Because if you remember, before this year, we just weren't sure. We weren't sure where he was at. Highly touted pick. Had some issues in 2020. Had to come home from the hub. Missed all of the year. So it's a big relief to see where he's at. He's developing in the back line. We've heard from Luke Power and the development coaches about this is what we're doing. This is the plan for Liam Stocker. And um, it's looking good. So I gave him an eight. Jacob Wiedering, captain of the club. See, for me, that, that can either hinder you or you can thrive with it. And I thought he thrived with it. Sole captain on the day. Um, 18 kicks, 12 marks. Beautiful entry kicks. Um, inside 50, there was one to Eddie Betts, I think 11.25 in the second quarter, third quarter, I think it was. Um, yeah, I thought Wiedering was sensational. Um, used the ball at 94% from his 18 kicks. So I think he's only had one one or two errant kicks. But uh, no, as a leader, he stood up, sold the message to the group, galvanized the group and, and provided a, a calm head there. And that's great for his development too. So I gave him a 10. Zach Williams... He, um, he triggers me when he doesn't do well because I expect more from him. Um, his first contest, he overruns the footy to give uh, Jamie Elliott his first goal. And I'm like, I actually, I just stood up and walked down the hallway and just, I was thinking it's going to be a long day. Um, next moment, he, he had no composure with the kick to Nathan Murphy, 14-10 to go. Um, and then again, talking about what are you doing with your next moment? And then he, he makes two intercept marks in a row. Um, he gets banged up a lot. He gets, I, I, I honestly question, is he really that hurt? He just seems to always be hurt and he plays it up. And I don't know if he's really sore or it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf because every time he cops a knock, there's screaming and carry on. And I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. I guess I just expect more from him. I want more from him. And it's, I think it's showing in the way that I watch him play. Um, but listen, he kicked a goal, which was crucial. Um, and he lifted in the fourth quarter. He was one of the first few that I noticed in that fourth quarter who truly lifted. Um, and so I, you know, I thought he did his job, just gave him a six for his game. Um, but I still think there is so much more room for improvement for him. He didn't lay a tackle, which is disappointing. Um, he wasn't alone. We had seven players that didn't lay tackles. But um, anyway, I gave him a, a six for his game. Obviously, banged up as well. So got to take that into account and, and take into account the full picture. Next up is Noons, Walsh, and Willow. Noons, I didn't really notice him a lot. And that's kind of what Jack Noons is. He's unassuming. Last week, he had 24 touches. I barely noticed him there as well. Um, he's a job doer. I don't expect him to be a star. Um, but I just didn't think he did. I thought he just scraped in for a pass. So I gave him a five. But it's very line ball. I think I might leave that up to you to decide that. Um, Walsh. My notes go like this. Quarter one, been everywhere. Quarter two, literally been everywhere. Quarter three, capital letters. Wow, built different goal. <laughs> and then the very next play was the inside 50 to Harry Mackay. And uh, he's the best player in the league, hands down. He's the best player in the team, best player in the league. I, I've been a little bit curious as to whether he'd make all Australian. I felt like he really needs to have these type of games but to have these type of games in his third year and really just take over the competition and insert himself into that conversation with the best midfielders in the league is phenomenal. Um, what is it? What are the stats in the end? It's 39 touches, 80% efficiency, a goal, five tackles, nine marks. The work rate stands out. Um, the passion stands out. The fuck yeah stands out. And uh, I love him. Gave him a 10. And he was the player of the game as well. Willow. This was an interesting one. I liked certain aspects and moments of his game. I actually thought he looked... I didn't mind the move to put him forward in that fourth. I, did, I actually didn't mind how it looked because he attacked the contest differently. 
He didn't have to worry about a defensive opponent, and he is by nature an attacking guy. Um, he kicked that behind for Collingwood, which I just you put your hand in your head, you put your head in your hand, and you just think, what, what, what's going on here? What are we doing? Um, but however, the very next play was the strong mark, um, and that's important. I gave him a pass mark for his game. I gave him a five, but you know he needs to keep working and keep developing because he's. You know, I want to see the next level from Willow. I don't think he's taken that next step this year, and I think he's got it in him. Um, it's just a matter of whether he's going to put the the consistent work in for that for that to show. So that's how I saw his game. Next up is Kerno, Jack Silvani, and Eddie Betts. Kerno he had six touches in the first. A lot of the kicking was was just you know hat kicking, turning the ball over. It's it's frustrating to watch him kick the ball at times because he's not clean with it. He's a bit of a, a wet weather football kind of guy, and it wasn't raining at the start of the game. Um, the handball to Samo under pressure. I'm not sure what part of the game that was. It was yeah here in the second quarter with 11 minutes to go. Just little things that stood out. Just could be cleaner because um, his work rate's there. It was weird to see he didn't lay a tackle for the game as well, which is really what I think Ed Kerno builds his game on, that pressure and whatnot. Um, but nonetheless, he had, he had over 20 possessions. He worked hard. Seven, uh, seven marks. He did go at 57%. So what are those touches worth? I don't really know, but I found a way to give him a five. Um, I reward winning. That's what I do. When you win, everyone wins. I did think it was a team win as well. So gave him a five, but you give me your uh, your opinion there. Jack Silvani, that was... Um, oh, it was emotional. It was very emotional. I think a lot of, some people were talking about like making him a captain yesterday. I, I, I actually can't believe people would even think that like, why would you... That's the last thing Jack Silvani needs yesterday. He doesn't need captaincy. He needs to go out there and just play football um, without thinking about anything else. Maybe toss the coin, but captaincy is not what he needed in this game. So I thought that was interesting, but he competed from the get-go every contest. He provided an option up the ground. I loved his contested mark in the second. And to be honest, that is really what sparked us. It provided that emotional buy-in from the boys because you've got to run in you've got to get around him they understand the significance of the of the moment and the gravity of of him as a player and what he means to the club i mean everyone's important but when you have a one of your brothers who's had a a grandfather who's passed away but also a grandfather who is a club icon um it's important um he took a great mark at an inside 50 to eddie betts in that second quarter afterwards with uh, a minute 50 to go and um, you know, takes the big specky, and it was it was Jack Silvani's day, and I lost it when he started crying, and um, you know, it I, I, it's so weird to say this, but we need like I feel like it's the circuit breaker this group needed. They needed something outside of what was happening in the week to week grind of the AFL to just galvanize them and bring them together and. Um, I think this was it. It really felt like that, um, to have that emotional buy-in, even with the fans or after the game, just with the tributes. And um, I love Jack. I love I love, I love the club. And, and Jack's a big part of that, and his family are a big part of that. And I gave Jack a 10. Like, I gave Jack a 10. Context of the day, what it meant to him, all the attention around him and the family and whatever. You can, you can crucify me for that, but I don't give a fuck. I gave him a 10 because he deserved it. And he played with the spirit that, you know, I look for um, Eddie Betts, strong mark early, lively pressure all game. Didn't didn't let up. Um, there was a mark from Weed as Weedering kicks him the ball inside 50. He turns around and, and he should have had a shot on goal. It was maybe 30, 35. I don't think it was 40. It was like 35 meters out, but he, he kicked it and turned it over. And I, I, I kind of put my head down thinking he's going to have a shot on goal. I waited for him to do his run up. And then I saw that the play had continued and it was weird. Um, he sets up Martin in the fourth quarter with 16.20 to go with that left foot kick, which was beautiful. Um, the crumbing goal moments later with 14 minutes to go. And then I just noticed his lively pressure all around it in, in the fourth quarter. And I gave him an eight for his game. Kick the two goals. That's obviously the important part. Um, 12 touches, four tackles, two goals. Played his role, did his role very well. So I gave him an eight for his game. Um, Matt Owies, Mackay and Martin. Owies, um, I didn't think he impacted much in the first not too much in the second. He, he pinned Steele in the still side bottom in the third, 15.30 to go. And I thought that got him going and it sort of got us going too, the start of that third quarter. Um, and uh, look, he didn't didn't kick any goals, um, but he did, you know, he sort of, it's, it's line ball with these small forwards. It's kind of like nine to 12 possessions and one or two shots on goal. 
In this case, for Owies, it was nine touches and, and two behinds. He earned three free kicks. He did go in hard and, and did his thing there. So I gave him a bare pass mark. Harry, goodness me, the first three quarters, it was it was, it was was interesting. Um, it was interesting. He, Jordan Roughhead, is, he's a good defender, but he's not Darcy Moore type defender, I, I don't think anyway. And I thought Jordan Roughhead got the better of Harry for the first three. And I, I noticed Harry outside of the forward 50 a lot. And it didn't make sense to me. Like, why would we have the most dangerous forward out of the goal square or whatnot? But that changed in the fourth. I think Harry just he just um, he just switched on, and he, and he you know he he has this ability to have moments now where it might not be his game, but he can find his way. And he found his way. Kicks four in the fourth, and listen, that's his job. You got to kick two or three as a key forward, and he's kicked four. I gave him an eight for his game, but it's a very interesting eight. It might even be a seven. I mean, four goals is four goals, and that's a great effort and the game was on the line and, and all of that and he rose to the occasion. So I think I'm giving extra points there. And also, he's a marquee player now and, and all of that and he's leading us. So yeah, I felt like an eight was appropriate. Jack Martin, I'm so relieved to be feeling like this about Jack Martin because the last few weeks, I just felt like he hadn't been showing the effort, the application and I feel vindicated in the criticism because of the way he played against Collingwood. That is how I see Jack Martin playing when he attacked. You can just see the way he was attacking each contest and chasing and the effort was there. And I I don't think he's injured anymore, you know, and I don't think he was injured last week. He might be a little sore and and whatnot, but um, that is how Jack Martin plays his football when he's at, you know, at his best. And we need him at his best because he's a very good player. Um, He kicked the need a goal after the siren in the first quarter. He pinned Quainor in the second quarter with nine minutes to goal. He sets up Stocker's goal right after that. Um, I thought he was one of our best in the first half. I thought he was one of our best on the day. Um, the turnover kick inside 50 to start the start of the third was disappointing. He needed to kick that goal in the fourth. And um, anyway, nonetheless, I, th- I thought Jack Martin absolutely did his job. That's probably his best game of the year. Yeah, the 18 touches, the 11 marks was important for me because he provided an option on a day where we're missing... You know, another real tall forward. He did provide an option. Five tackles was important. One goal, one. Probably should have been a two. I tossed up between an eight and a nine. I gave him a nine because I wanted to really reward him. But I don't know. It could be an eight. You let me know what you think. Next up is De Koning, Dow, and Kennedy. Tommy, he was up for it. He was up for the battle against Grundy, who is a star. Star of the competition. I thought Tom started well in the first quarter. And I thought he was starting to get outworked by Grundy in the second quarter. Um, But that was always going to happen. He's going to have patches against the great Ruckman. Um, The third quarter is interesting. He has that direct turnover to uh, Trent Bianco, I think it was, with four minutes to go. And thinking, oh my God, like what's the problem there? Is it coaching? How can it be coaching when the players are turning it over like that? But again, the very next contest that Tom was a part of, it results in a goal to him. So that was important that he responded. Um, I thought he held his own. I did. I thought he held his own. I gave him an eight for his game, and I was very, very impressed that he didn't get dominated by Grundy, and that was because of his ability to keep competing. Um, and I think he's getting better. I really do. I think he's. I said it last week, and I think the rest of this season, it's really important he gets through, improves, uninterrupted preseason, and then we're ready to go round one, 2022, with Tom DeConing in the ruck, and and he's ready to go. So um, well done to him, Paddy Dow. I loved his start, eight touches. I think they were, I think they were all handballs, um, but he, he's he's learnt. Something's happened. It happened with Jack Silvani a couple of years ago, I think at the end of 2019, where he Paddy now has the strength in the hips to not get brought to ground, and it started happening with Jack Silvani in about 2019, and you can see the confidence when he's in a contest now. He has a little bit more time, just a fraction, because he, he believes in his strength. I can see it. And um, it's starting to show. It is, it is very much starting to show. Um, I, I enjoyed watching him play. The clearances were good. Um, he had the you know 17 touches, 13 handballs. I think he played to his strengths. There's definitely room for improvement. There were some things where he's got to get involved more. He has to tackle more. He has to tackle more. He didn't lay a tackle. And for a guy that we want to run through the midfield and sort of take Ed Kerno out of that mix and have Paddy Dow in there, he has to be tackling four to five times a game the way I see it. So that's the next step for him. Um, nonetheless, I gave him a... I wrote down a seven. I've been so lenient today, but whatever. Um, I gave him a seven 
I flirted with the six, but I felt like that wasn't enough. So we'll see how you see that. Kennedy, man, I gave Kennedy a 10. He's a rookie. He's a rookie. He's on the rookie list. Um, 16 touches in the first half. Huge goal in the third quarter. Um, played his guts out all day. 26 touches, seven marks, seven tackles. He led the team uh, in tackles, which was important. Kicked the goal as well. That's really all. I mean, what, what else can you ask from Matt Kennedy, honestly? I don't think he can play much better than that. That's the best game I've seen him play for us, honestly. He, he was at it all day. The tackle pressure was amazing. And it was important without Crips in there. That's the other factor as well. No Crips, who's going to step up? We know Walsh will step up, but we needed a couple more, and I thought he absolutely did that. So well done to him. Gave him a 10. Next up is Samo, Newman, Fisher, and Cottrell. Samo, um, felt like we needed more more from him overall, but in the first, in particular, he gave away the 50-meter penalty in the second quarter with 8.30 to go. I didn't notice him here or there. He was, he was good. He had nice moments, some nice you know ducks and weaves and dodges, but ultimately... I still think he got his job done, but it's just left me wanting more. And it's a big preseason for Samo um, if he wants it. Like, it's just a question of how badly does Sam Petrovsky see and want it for me. And I gave him a six for his game. Newman, much of the same. Gave him a six for his game. Um, he was good, solid, did his job. I didn't feel like it was over the top with his performance. It was good enough. And yeah, I felt like six was where it's at. 16 touches with five marks and a tackle. I've seen him play better than that, but um, he, he's had a pretty good month. So I think it's just a circumstance. Uh, he's a victim of his own own uh, circumstance in how well he's played over the last few weeks. So that's just how I saw it. Fisher, I thought we needed more from him in the first quarter as well. Um, he he was um, he he had some more time throughout the midfield, and I loved it, particularly in that fourth. He was one of the others that really stood up for me. I'm not sure how many touches he had in the fourth, but. He looks so much more comfortable when he has that time on the ball. And I feel like it's an interesting one because Owies has emerged in 2021 and he wasn't he hadn't emerged in 2020. And that's kind of where the Zach Fisher to the forward line became apparent. I really think we should start looking at Zach Fisher to go on the wing or just part of the midfield rotation a bit more, split the time up. Um, he doesn't have a long penetrating kick. And I say that after that. That mark he took, and he he does like he can't kick a fifty meter goal or a forty five meter goal. Um, so maybe there is something in having him running with the ball and having that run and carry and, and being that link up in the middle of the ground because he just first of all he's a midfielder. Let's just be honest. That's what he is. Yes, we want to develop players and add different elements to their game. Um, but yeah, he's a he's an exciting player, and I think you need that creativity um, in the middle of the ground because we are now starting to see. Um, our group used the handball game a little bit more, and he is a very, uh, a very important part of that. So I thought he was, I thought he was pretty good on the day. Um, after the slow start, he had the 19 touches, kicked two behinds, uh, worked hard. I gave him a seven, and then Cottrell, I struggle to watch him play. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> he tries, but he's just the the skills aren't there. And again, the hard work, year after year, week after week, all of that will eventually come to fruition. So I really think we need to persist with him. Um, I felt like Honey should have played instead of Cottrell, but whatever, it is what it is. Um, I thought it was a bit of a poor effort in that second quarter to not get back hard enough. And he gave up that mark to Hoskin Elliott with two minutes to, six minutes to go in the second. Um, but he worked hard and he lifted as they all did. I gave him a six for his game. He's obviously, I don't expect too much from him, but I still think he, he did, um, did his job in the end. It just, it's not pretty. That day wasn't pretty. The win wasn't pretty, um, but we take it nonetheless. So anyway, that's how I saw the ratings. Please feel free to add your input, whether you want to do your own ratings or adjust mine. I will change them based on your feedback. So don't stress and get uh, too offended by them. Um, let's enjoy the win. It's been a great one. I've enjoyed doing this and uh, I am going to enjoy the rest of this week. And then we're going to have to move on pretty quickly because North Melbourne awaits us on Saturday Arvo. So with that... Enjoy and go the Mighty Blues.